the first sounds um, are defined as uh, reflexive vocalizations. I'm referring to the sounds that the infant produces during the first month of life. These are mainly cries and vegetative or discomfort sounds. Immediately after this short stage, starting around the second month of life, infants produce cooing and laughter. Uh, these are typical sounds that can be produced in pleasurable interaction with an adult or another child in the family. Then there is stage starting around the fourth month of life um, that's called the vocal play stage in which the infants produce weird sounds. They yell, they growl, uh, they make sounds that parents sometimes don't like or they are surprised because they they do not understand. This is called the vocal play stage because the infant at that time is really exploring the whole range of possibilities uh, in phonation. So they uh, make these high pitch uh, sounds, also uh, very low pitch ones, uh, and uh, these are the sounds that um, a researcher in this domain, um, uh, Oller, has defined as uh, protophones. So these are the very first uh, type of sounds in which the infant really is exploring the possibilities of phonation. Immediately after that, infants produce or reach the stage of what is called the marginal babbling. Starting about five months of age, infants usually produce something closer to the syllables in the, in the adult speech. But this is not yet canonical babbling, this is called marginal babbling. These marginal babbling sounds do not resemble the sounds of the, of the adult language because the timing is not the adequate, uh, in the sense that instead of saying something like, let's say, ba, ba, they produce something like wa, wa, so longer stretches of vowel-like sounds and nearly stop consonants, but not with a real closure. Uh, these are the typical sounds of the, of the first semester of life. Marginal babbling uh, actually is not the proper babbling, but is related to the canonical babbling that will appear a few months uh, later in, or immediately afterwards. So it could be considered, this marginal babbling could be considered a precursor of the canonical repetitive babbling. Some of these marginal productions uh, uh, can be produced by, totally by chance, because the infant may be, she might be playing with an object, placing that object close to the mouth, and then the sound that is heard is kind of a mixture of a vowel plus a stop and it sounds like a wa or a bwa and uh, this is a clear precursor of the babbling stage that will uh, begin sometime during the second semester of life. So all these sounds that I've just described, the sounds that are produced during the first semester of life, usually can be heard when the infant is in isolation, on her bed, on, her, on a chair, uh, alone, uh, in her room. But they can also be promoted. Uh, for instance, a smiling face can promote cooing. And also, uh, if the adult repeats or tries to imitate the infant, the infant may go on. But this is, I mean, this is important in, because it provides an enjoyable situation, but um, parents should be aware that these sounds, these first sounds, are mostly produced in isolation because this is kind of a, a, a practice period, um, exploring the full range of possibilities. So uh, parents should refrain from uh, stopping uh, the production of these sounds. Uh, and I'm saying this especially thinking uh, of the child or of the young infant when uh, she is uh, yelling or um, squealing and sometimes parents are surprised or, and they don't think that these are 
uh, normal sounds, and these are. So uh, infants should not be uh, blocked when producing these sounds, and parents should smile and nod and contribute to uh, promoting these, uh, these sounds whenever they are produced. When the infant produces these sounds, uh, she's exploring the full range of uh, possibilities in phonation. So uh, it is important that these sounds are not interrupted, uh, they are considered as part of the develop development in speech production.